Hello gang, this is Elijah Henderson with the Cryptid Studies Institute, and I sincerely hope that you've been enjoying our weekly uploads from our book series, Tales from the Holler. And if by chance you're new to the channel, and you're unaware of it, that is exactly, it is a collection of short stories that were originally intended to be released as a series of books that my dad, Johnny Henderson, and my sister, Gabrielle Henderson, have been writing for the past few years which are best described as a gory, twisted version of Dr. Seuss. Many of the stories are loosely based on tales of cryptids and creatures that my dad grew up hearing about in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains, such as Sasquatch or Bloody Bones and Rawhead. However, not all the stories are based on Appalachian lore. Some of the stories are inspired by their love of the great universal movie monsters, such as Frankenstein, the Wolfman, and Dracula and even the modern classic movie monsters like Gremlins, The Fog, or Halloween. It is a virtual cornucopia of twisted inspiration and fun that we are uploading weekly as a thank you to the viewer and fans of the channel for all the love and kindness that you have shown us here and all across social media. And we really can't thank you enough for all that you do. So you get to preview the stories before we self-publish later in the year, now that we finally got the copyright back. And just as a brief disclaimer, these are not true stories in any stretch of the imagination. They are a work of fiction meant to provide simple entertainment. And I want to make that clear because I don't want it to be misconstrued as a true story, although I believe it would be extremely difficult to believe that it is true. Anyway though, I've rambled enough. Enjoy the second chapter of Tales from the Holler, Stitches. One last thing though, each story will overlap another chapter somewhere down the line, Characters will reappear, and overarching plot threads will be dealt with later in the series. And events will grow in intensity until all stories converge in the final chapters. Once again, thank you, and we just wanted to share something fun with you all. Without no further ado, Stitches. In a field on the mountain full of October corn is a place that is cursed where a legend was born. Of a man who was hexed by the foulest of witches a man who became the demon called Stitches. Stitches was once named Johnny McCarter, till he sought out the witch to trade and to barter. There was nary a plant that would grow in his field, the corn would all wither and nothing would yield. And Johnny was desperate to grow a good crop, he wanted the biggest on the whole mountain top. So he went to the witch, Granny Ferris her name, but unknown to Johnny, stealing souls was her game. Johnny went humbly, with his hat in his hand, to beg the old witch to help heal his land. He offered to pay her a steep compensation, but the more they spoke caused her great agitation. How dare you come here to my private abode? I should turn you into a giant rat or a toad. You deserve something substantially worse. Johnny McCarter, hear now my curse. You come to me to entreat for your land, but you're weaker than straw, not really a man. You want to grow corn to sow and protect it, now you and your field are forever connected. A scarecrow you'll be, a thing of disgust. Burlap for skin, fill the straw, weeds, and dust. Your crops will all grow when watered with blood from your family and friends and the woman you love. And you'll kill them all to slake the land's thirst. Now be gone, wretched thing, from this day you are cursed. Then Johnny McCarter and his flannel and breeches became burlap and straw, a scarecrow named Stitches. His eyes became buttons, his head an old sack, his heart became withered and hardened and black. Bound to a land that he must cultivate, a bloodthirsty fiend filled with malice and hate. Stitches embraced his new life as a villain, he picked up a pitchfork and commenced to go killing. He gigged Bobby Trotter in the head with his fork as he sat eating apples and a piece of fried pork. He then took an axe and killed old Roger Dottie. He hacked and he slashed and dismembered his body. He used a red tractor to run down his neighbor, then killed Annie Harris with an old army saber. His weapon of choice was a razor-sharp sickle that he used to dispatch cousin Jerry Lee Mickle. He cut off his head, his legs, and his arms, then he butchered a family at the Cottonwood Farms. He gathered the pieces of all of his victims, and if he had a tongue, the old fiend would have licked them. He put all the parts in an old grassy sack then off he did go with them slung across his back. Off to his field where he buried them deep, a gift for his land so the blood it could seep, to water his crop and to make his corn grow, 
tall and abundant as he stalked twixt the rows. Then Stitches set out to kill the ones he most loved, as a murder of crows caught from high up above. Stitches strode boldly through the gate to his farm, and his goodly wife Janie was filled with alarm. She said, Johnny, my love, you've come back a killer, stuffed full of straw with a dust and weed filler. The sound of her voice awakened something in Stitches, back when he was a man and he longed for her kisses. A strange sadness filled his buttony eyes, and grains of dust fell as he started to cry. I won't be a killer, he thought in his mind. I once was a man, and once I was kind. I won't be a monster who murders his wife. To save my beloved, I will take my own life. Then using his sickle, he cut through the stitches, breaking the curse of the queen of the witches. The dust and the weeds spilled out on the ground, and his burlap and rags fell silently down. Stitches was now just the husk, an old shell, and Johnny was free from the old witch's spell. Johnny's good wife took his clothes and restuffed him. She packed and she loaded, she filled and she fluffed him, then carried his carcass to the field that he loved, to bury him there with the blue sky above. Then she thought, maybe you'd like to look out on your field, to survey your crop as it brings in its yield. I can't bear to put you in a dark, lonely hole, so rest here, my love, tied to this pole. She kissed him and left him to go to his slumber, as rain started falling amidst lightning and thunder. She returned the next day after all of the showers, to pray for his soul and place freshly cut flowers. But the body of Johnny was missing and gone and Janie was left in that field all alone. Some say the storm carried him far away, while others are fearful to this very day that the witch came a-calling by cover of night to bring Stitches back as a curse and a blight. Some people say that the scarecrow arose, come back to kill, but then nobody knows. However, a many strange deaths have occurred in the fields full of corn and the screeching blackbirds. So be wary, my friend, when you go out to sow, cause stitches may be stalking there twixt the rows.